Beware, coward. Hello, you're watching Bit. And over the next half an hour, we're going to be chewing the fat off the great gaming cow. Tonight, we're loading our guns and losing our minds as Bits goes shooting sheep in Point Blank 2, killing zombies in House of the Dead 2, and hunting aliens in Quake 3 Arena. On top of news, previews, and a console giveaway in this week's comp. But first, the Duke and Nuke is back to blast you. When Duke Nukem originally hit the first-person shooter market, the classic Doom was still in its initial incarnation. This trash-talking Arnold Schwarzenegger pumped-up beefcake feller took over the scene until Quake time, at which point the population became firmly divided between the two killer games. The Dukers looking for some serious laughs, and the Quakers desperate for some serious blood. Now Mr. Nukem is just about to make his second console-only appearance, this time on the N64. Duke Nukem Zero Hour has arrived. In the beginning, Duke Nukem was a PC game. It was a hit, so they decided, as oft happens, to port it over to the PlayStation. Everyone and their grandmother got to know the large Aryan guy with the guns. Enter World of Infamy, so on over to the N64 we will go. Duke 64 was born. In many ways, these replications were like the original, plot and all. But the console market demanded something of its own. Looks like it's time to kill. The PlayStation got there first, with Duke Nukem's Time to Kill, departing from the original concept and delving into the past, present, and future, a la the introduction of a time machine. Nintendo became jealous and wanted one of its own. So Zero Hour is a similar title, only on its 64-bit machine. Phew! Duke's a popular guy. He likes his ladies, he loves his beers, and he needs his guns, because the aliens are back and they're playing around with his family line. Zero Hour takes its cue from the PlayStation release Duke Nukem Time to Kill. It's more Die Hard than Tomb Raider, more Bill and Ted than Half-Life. You've got to save yourself from extinction by building up a time machine, protecting your ancestors, saving babes, and ridding the bad guys from present-day NYC, the Wild West, Victorian England, and some mixed-up parameter zone where the alien mothership resides. Unlike previous PC or N64 versions of the game, you get to see more of the hunk o duke meat from the PSX-originated third-person perspective. Originally, the game was supposed to have a first-person option, but for now, the only places you get to see through the master's eyes are when up against a wall, mm, in sniper mode, or in the multiplayer duke match. It makes the play feel more non-linear and gives you a sense of stability as you parade around city streets with armaments out the wazoo. But it has the same failings of all third-person adventures, like uneasy aiming and jumping control. Though at first glance it seems similar to the latest PlayStation Nukem, the 22 levels have been designed specifically for the N64 using the Turok engine. Expect a few bows of respect in that direction and better gameplay all around. It's definitely got the feeling of Goldeneye action, Tomb Raider adventure, and Half-Life battle, but it's funnier. It's got personality. It's a little bit cheeky. Touch me again, and I'll kill you. Movement of the man has been upgraded, so get ready to rumble sideways, finways, rollways, jumpways, and somersaultways. Plowing through with your weapon hanging tough is no longer the only option. In fact, the game requires brains with your brawn. You won't be able to rely solely on flipping switches to get objectives completed either. 007-style missions with multitasking no less are plentiferous here. Unfortunately, there's no saving between goals or during maze wandering, so expect to be holed up in front of your screen for at least 40 minutes per level. If the puzzle's a coolio, then the bad guy AI leaves something to be desired. The element of surprise does not enter into the gameplay. The only replayable thing about any of the Duke Nukems is the search for secrets and babes. Alien scum is easily destroyed at the exact same position every time you come around that corner. And they're not exactly making a beeline away from your rapid fire. What is this? Silver service? Monster-wise, the old standbys are back, like Octobrains, the Pickcocks, and the Sentry Drones. New folk pop up according to the time, like the Plague Zombies, similar to the skeletons in Castlevania 64, which come out of the graveyards of Victorian Britain. The death rates are a bit on the inconsistent side, and I found that kicking butt was more difficult up close than at sniper's length. That aside, they are fantastic to look at in full 3D with no pixelation anywhere. Nay sprites here, you can blow them into separate chunks. Weapons are varied and plenty, the nicest touch being the period pieces. Check out the similarity between Duke and Clint with the Colt 45. 
So violence is cool on the N64, but they've taken out all the boobs. Yeah, you can read the tongue-in-cheek posters and check out the graffiti. But the babes are fully covered and they are less exotic. What do you expect from the kids' console? Full frontal? The visual quality of Duke Zero Hour challenges even the PC versions and easily exceeds the blocky, pixelated mush of Time to Kill. There's absolutely no fog. <coughs> now, multiplayer is a whole other story. With the fantastic option of four controllers, you and three of your best mates can duke it out physically and intellectually, bantering about which new hole you're going to rip where and what your face looks like, like in the morning. morning. Best of all is the Team Duke match where you can gang up and ostracize your weakest pal, mocking him into miserable depression. There are 29 characters you can play and 14 different battle zones to choose from. We like Duke. He's clever, he's witty, he's got a thing for the babes, and he doesn't let his work get in the way of it. Respect for the man. If you're a graduate of Tomb Raider and you're looking for something cool before TR4 is bouncing into view this Christmas, well, this hot tamale might just take your sights off of Ms. Croft's bum and put them permanently onto the Nuka. He's got a hell of a lot more style. Duke Nukem Zero Hour is releasing some steam from early September. Hail to the king, baby. Point Blank 2 follows in the footsteps of the original with Dr. Don and Dr. Dan tripping the light gun fantastic. Probably not the biggest smash hit on the PlayStation when it first came out, it has since built up a massive cult following. Now it's time to dust off your G-Con 45 and start shooting from the hip. Okay, so there's not a huge difference in gameplay between the first and the second, or even the arcade versions. The same premise applies everywhere. It's all cutesy characters, red and blue targets, and terrorists looking for trouble. You'll be faced with a plethora of specific time challenges, some of them simple, some seemingly impossible, all of them addictive. There are four key areas to explore in this version. First up is a castle with a choice of one or two player modes and a new addition to the game, the endurance test. Yes, you guessed it. This is where you pit your skills against the computer in endless shooting gallery challenges until you run out of lives. And it's a hard task. For those of you who enjoy a more leisurely ride, go into the versus or one player mode. Here you'll be faced with the usual choice of levels, including practice, beginner, advanced or insane. If you're having difficulty with a particular round, such as one of the moving target set, then pop into the training mode, where you'll be able to choose your series and improve your play. It's also good if you like one of the challenges, such as the sheep shearing one, which is brilliantly dark. Oops. Next up is the theme park mode. This replaces the quest of the original. Basically, there are four areas to explore. The abyss, an underwater stage. The haunted house, where you have to meander your way through a maze. The cosmic drive, deep space for you cadets out there. And a super bullet train stage. Point Blank 2 is a brilliant gun game. Although the cartoon style graphics may great at first, give it a chance, as you'll be surprised at how tough it really is and at how addictive. If you haven't already got a light gun, then I suggest you buy the one that's bundled with the game, because the controllers just won't do the job properly. Point Blank 2 will be available for your PlayStation at the end of August. A racing game that combines dirt with power and absolute stupidity, look no further. Monster Truck Madness 64 is on its way. Go! Monster Truck Madness 64 doesn't make any false pretenses. The game is all about bringing arcade fun to your living room. You get the choice of 20 of the biggest and baddest trucks and roam around 10 gnarly tracks. But what developers Edge of Reality have achieved for the racing machine, they certainly did not accomplish for the rest of the game. The environments are poorly textured and generally seem to suffer from the good old blur syndrome. You can't look far ahead, and even if you could, there's nothing to see. Also, I expected my machines to get dirty or at least kick up some mud. Monster Truck Man in 64 makes sport look very clean indeed. But racing is not the only thing you can do. 
There are also a couple of battle modes which will have you play soccer, hockey or even police, chase and tag. Which brings me to the handling of the vehicles. Most of the time maneuvering just feels out of control. Also when you crash into cars, the impact of the collision is often overemphasized. Trucks fly all over the place regardless of the force of impact. Realism comes second in this game. But if you enjoy trashing into metal and let your opponents be squashed on impact, this game will keep your adrenaline pumping. Monster Truck Man is 4 N64 is out to buy now. Yes, Nintendo have been raking it in with their divine little Game Boys, but now it's time to run for cover or run to the shops, whichever way you want to see it, because the Pokemon phenomenon is coming to town. It's already taken over Japan, the US and Australia, and no doubt we too are about to be brainwashed into giving the little Pokemon creatures a home on our handhelds. Makes the Tamagotchi seem about as interesting as telling the time. Continuing the trend we started in last week's program, we're congratulating four lucky winners from competitions two and three. Stephen Edwards, Paul McGinney, and Mr. C. Hewitt, you were correct in declaring that the Pac-Man car is the ultimate unlocker in Ridge Racer 4. So you're going to be driving away with your very own console-specific steering wheel. The following week, we gave away a deck tech of GT Interactive games. Who the heck would want so many? It appears a lot of you did. And certainly, Ahmed1 at mcmail.com did, because he sent in the correct response. The Sims is the next project from Will Wright, one of the top 50 most influential people in the world and creator of the Sim City series. For the rest of you, Sim porn industry is not in the works, so stop sending it in. But do keep sending in your homemade games. We got one from one mailer, curiously called Sonic Sweet Pea, who sent us the penis game. Very droll. Send them in, though, because we're hoping to review them at the end of the show. <laughs> And now it's time to take a little peek at some of the games on the shop shelves right now. MIG Alley is out now for your PC. Hoist the hammer and sickle and fly around in ultra genuine 50s MIGs as you destroy the enemy in dogfights. Like all decent flight sims, it comes with a massive instruction manual. Strictly for plane spotters then. Lovely looking retro cool in modern 3D. If you're a space freak with Star Wars Overload, then warp drive your way out of that distant galaxy and back to save the Earth. Omega Boost hasn't got much of a story or any depth of gameplay, but it is one of the most spectacular space shooters ever. PC players are about to enjoy the Command and Conquer sequel, Tiberian Sun. The original game has been out for computers and PlayStations for donkeys. Well, at last, Nintendo owners, you get to join in all the strategizing and killing as Command & Conquer gets the N64 port. You're looking at it now, and it's a classic. So there you have it. Meg Alley, a Mega Boost, and Command & Conquer. Something for everyone. After the break, we're blowing chunks out of the undead. Orange believe in always giving our customers more. So from now on we're giving all of our talk fan customers up to twice as many in have reeled in fortunes with their coin ops and amongst the most popular series has been the house of the dead now at long last they're bringing these zombies into the safety of your own home 
for their brand new console version of House of the Dead 2. For those of you who don't know it, House of the Dead is basically a point-and-shoot game set in a city overrun with zombies and other revolting creatures. Please be safe, G. Apart from the visual realism, where you can blow off the monster's body parts bit by bit, this game is pretty tough. Frankly, if you've never tried it, I defy you not to love it. What could be more cool than being sat in your living room zapping zombies from your sofa? It doesn't get much better than this, really. The arcade version has been faithfully reproduced, including spectacular visuals. Now, for those of you who rushed out to buy a Japanese Dreamcast so that you could show off to your friends, let me tell you that the PAL version I've been playing shows noticeably better graphics. I found that the NTSC version kept sticking when I used it. Apart from the arcade section, which is unquestionably masterful fun, there are several other modes to convince you that this is indeed a game well worth selling out the Nelsons for. Firstly, there's the original mode that initially plays just like the arcade one, but this time you get more pickups, including extra lives and new weapons to use against the ghastly ghoulies. Thank you for rescuing me. Check out the boss mode too. Here you can pit your skills against all the big baddies you'll encounter in the game. Of course, you'll have to unlock them first, but if you're having difficulties with one in particular, this is a good place to practice. The training mode, however, is probably the best new addition in the console version. There are ten stages and each is like a mini game. You'll have to save hostages, kill loads of zombies with limited ammo and shoot barrels amongst other cool stuff. Well worth spending some time here as if you do well, you may get the chance to cheat. Listen up. To get all the items in the original mode, you'll have to finish the training mode with a five red star difficulty on each training stage undoubtedly worth it, but it isn't going to be easy. This game has definitely got stamina. It is so hard. Even Clint Eastwood would have a run for his fistful of dollars. However, it is just another shoot-em-up and not the most refined one at that. Point and pull the trigger as fast as you can, basically. Most standard zombies will drop after three or four shots, max. To make the game more interesting though, you'll be able to go through different routes as you cross the town. And it's well worth getting to the end of the game however you get there, because you'll be unlocking some mad stuff, including shooting fishermen's tackle as ammo. Bizarre, or what? House of the Dead 2 is undoubtedly one of the strongest titles on the Dreamcast to date, It'll be well worth the dosh when it comes out in September. We're cutting corners here at Bits to give you the finest cheats for the finest games. Guaranteed to put a smile on even the most pallid of faces. With our handy scissors and a piece of paper, we're going to hack and paste together all of your encoded fantasies. So big boy Swiss skates is your bag then. Take this cheat for NHL 99 on PC and transform that rink into a freak show on ice. Give your players elongated arms, legs, and necks. In the main menu, type in Mantis for some giraffic action. And watch those grizzly guys get gangly. For those of you into the theory that bigger is better, then you obviously haven't tried this cheat. In Mission Impossible on the N64, unlock a Diddy rocket launcher to pepper those bad boy scum with teensy weensy little bullet holes. Ouch. Go to the level select screen and press R, L, C left, C right, C down. It's Emmental time for those big cheeses. Bruce Willis is far too big for his britches. Now if you think that his physique should match his ego, well then this porky cheat for the PlayStation Die Hard trilogy should bulk old Brucey up. Pause the game and while holding R2, press right, square, square down. And now you're bloating your way to the top. Yippee-yay, Kaye. Surprisingly enough, the seminal game series Quake has only been around for three years. John Carmack built it back in 1996, and since then it's gone from strength to strength. Now it's back. This new Quake promises to merge the best in 3D engineering with the ultimate in deathmatches. 
which is just as it should be, as this is a do or die game. Beautifully designed arenas combined with bots to make your blood curdle. In this new version that gets back to its first person shooter roots, the AI has been sorted, amongst other things. Electronic enemies will now have the same field of vision as you. Not bad. Like in Quake 2, you can currently download select Quake 3 levels off the net, and they're looking dandy. So come on Christmas, get your act together, because PC players are just dying to get bloody again, and feel the keyboard tremble and shake. Or the thing my grandmother used to tell me, if you've got boobs, wear animal skins, and fight with a necklace, well, you're gonna go far. Thankfully, one person has followed grandma's advice, Xena Warrior Princess, because now she's got butt-kicking rights on PlayStation and her very own action-adventure scantily clad title. And oh, aren't we proud? <laughs> she's the chick from the TV show, the female Robin Hood of the prehistoric day, and as is the way with license-driven creations, the game's not had a lot of thought put into it. Yes, they're letting the boobs lead the way. Yes, it will gather the millions of Xena fans together to sing her praises and quote her oh-so-deep thoughts daily. And for one fleeting moment, they may actually believe they're in charge of her destiny. But the reality is that you could put anyone into her role and you'd end up with yet another excuse for a walking beat-em-up with supermodels with pointy hooters who don't break into a sweat. And regardless of how many times she's struck by a mighty sword, not a stitch of clothing comes off. You'll have to wait for the naked cheat to see some warrior princess ass. The plot involves saving the universe from mystical bad guys. Like in any platform adventure, you've got to get through the grunts before you hit the big bosses. They either take the form of a guy with a hood or a bald man, both of whom appear a hell of a lot stronger than they fight. Xena can take on four at once. One mighty swipe of her sword and the cat call later, they've all abandoned ship or met their makers. Perhaps she kicks ass, or perhaps something is horribly, horribly wrong. She's got some girly weapons and wiggles her girly butt. She strikes poses. She uses her necklace as a murderous boomerang and gets sword upgrades fighting through adult Zelda-like levels. Hopefully by the time this game is released, the blocky graphics will have been ironed out. But the water looks like a carpet and the landscape is cheap. All horizontal action ceases when it hits the vertical 2D plane. None of this wandering as far as the eye can see here. Maybe you boys can see far enough already. For devotees of the TV show, you may as well save your pennies for an internet connection so you can go online and surf all the official and unofficial fan sites and where you can download the trifle Xena vs. the Young Hercules. For everyone else, unless you've got a thing for boxy graphics and uninspired gameplay, avoid. Xena Warrior Princess is out for your PlayStations in October. There's a new ISS Pro on the way, and unlike other lesser football titles, this one isn't going to be known as the 99 version. Oh no, this one's called ISS Pro Evolution. And so far, it does look like it's going to be a few steps up the old ladder. The most noticeable difference, apart from the faster frame rate and therefore improved graphics, is a more open feel to the gameplay. Konami have achieved this by firstly making the actual pitch bigger and secondly giving the players more moves which means more options and a greater maneuverability of the boys themselves. In ISS Pro 98 they had basic diagonal movements. Now they should be able to practically turn on a five pence piece. This new version also boasts more realistic passing so no more kicking the ball for it to magically land at the intended feet. You'll have to line it up and decide how hard to kick it if you want it to reach its mark. Oh, and this applies to goal shooting as well, so no more fluking about. This is pure skill from here on in. There will also be loads more competitions and cups, including Konami's own. But the league I'm most excited about is the one you'll be able to create yourself. That takes on up to 50 of you and your mates' teams. With one memory card, you'll be able to battle out a whole season. It's like a whole weekend of Sabucho in your pocket. Roll on ISS Pro Evolution, out in October. And if that's not enough for you, then Konami are already working on the next instalment called ISS Pro Millennium. Now that's a result. It's competition time, and this week we've got a dream prize for you. Yes, you could win your very own dream car, delivered to your home on September the 23rd. 
the official UK launch date of Sega's brand new Super Console. If you can dream up your weirdest and wildest analysis of Alex's nightmare. I dreamt I was in prison. I was eating pecan pie and watching as parrots cavorted outside the bars of my cell. A guard walked by and threw in some cockroaches. I screamed in horror as they crawled all over me. And then I woke up. Please send your diagnosis to bitsonforlater at yahoo.co.uk and then maybe we can sort this nuts around.